So today our topic is navigating the remote work environment confidently and successfully in this time of transition and uncertainty. Before we dive into this topic, I want to welcome Julie DeLuca Collins as today's guest. Round of applause. Thank you. She is a local influencer and leader who is committed to the well-being of the communities she works, lives, and plays in. For the last 20 years, Julie has worked in various roles at Brienza's Academic Advantage, an academic solution organization in New York. She began her career there as a pre-K teacher and eventually became the Chief Innovation Officer. She has collaborated with school districts and schools to implement professional development programs for teachers and faculty, as well as instructional and tutoring programs for students. More, more recently, as of April 2020, Julie is the founder, CEO, and podcast host for Go Confidently Services, which includes coaching and a podcast, and many other things that Julie can expand upon. <laughs> we here at United Way know her through her involvement with Women United. For those who may not know, Women United is a diverse network of professional women and leaders who stand up and take action to help women and families in our community work toward financial security. Members connect and collaborate with powerful, like-minded women and inspire meaningful change. I found a direct quote from Julie um, via one of her uh, websites, and this is what Julie had to say about Women United. Women United members believe when a network of caring, powerful women get together to create positive change, anything is possible. With membership doubling in the past, so did our ability to strengthen our community. With continued support, we will ensure a brighter future for local women and families. With that said, I'd like to let Julie DeLuca Collins kick off, kick off our conversation, Confidence in the Remote Workplace. Amanda, thank you so much. I I am honored and it is such a pleasure to be here. This is an exciting time because we get to still hold this wonderful event and this is an opportunity for us to just think out of the box and share a little bit. And this topic is something that I'm really passionate about. So I wanted to definitely be able to share some of the tips and tools that I feel that can help you build confidence in, in a new beginning, right? A new era, a new situation. And for me, this is so great to be able to be a part of something that is definitely uh, that I'm passionate about and with an organization that is doing a lot of great work and continues to be committed in the community. So thank you all of you for coming. I am going to begin the presentation by sharing my screen. And again, as Amanda said, this is, um, and I guess confidence in a remote workplace. And I'm sorry, I want to make sure that I minimize this and Give me a thumbs up if you are able to see the presentation. And the next thing that I would like to begin with is, let's see, will it, oh, see, confidence in a, in a workplace. Slide one, a little bit about me, you already heard, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on here. And oh, it's playing without me, so. But overall, I found myself really working with women throughout my career and really working in different organizations. I've been a mentor, coach, a leader with uh, different non-for-profits. And what I found is that when my career sort of came to a halt because of COVID-19 and my organization found itself in a, in a position that we needed to separate because of the struggle that they were encountering in an organization, I needed to pivot myself as well. I needed to pivot. So I founded Go Confidently Coaching because I'm already working with women. I'm working with a lot of different organizations and I wanted to continue to do that. And I thought that this would be a great time to be able to do that. Now, as Amanda mentioned, I've been in the education field for a long time. I've trained teachers, I've trained parents. And because I wanted to go ahead and continue to hone my skills in some of the trainings that I'm developing, 
I went and I got holistic certified as a coach in co um, cognitive behavioral techniques as well, because I do a lot of work at the community college with women. I'm also a member of the Governor Lamont's steering committee for women and girls. And in all of these roles, I am speaking about being confident, being who you are, becoming a leader. And I wanted to make sure that as I am speaking about this, I am not only implementing those in my life, but I'm also facilitating the skills and sharing some of the knowledge that it takes to get there. And confidence, and that's something that we wake up with one day and all of a sudden have it. Um, we look at many people and think, oh, I wish I had that confidence or I wish I, I was like that person. But ultimately, it's an inside job. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, one of the things that I want to share in, in the information about me is that I became a yoga teacher back last year in the fall. And many people, you know, look at me and think, oh my gosh, she's not your usual yoga teacher look like a person, you know. And, and um, it took a lot for me to be able to step out of my comfort zone to be able to do that. But I seized the moment and I did that because it is in seizing the moment and stepping out of your comfort zone that you become more confident in anything that you're doing. Now today, some of the things that I wanna go ahead and discuss with the group are routine teens, connections, healthy morale and communication, and confidence through nonverbal communication. These are the topics that in looking at such a broad topic as confidence in the workplace, as it relates to how we are working now, I felt that these would be the individual points that would help us all really be able to create um, better understanding of what are the things that can serve us better under this environment. Feel free to definitely ask questions. I will appreciate if we maybe start start uh, the questions on the chat and then Amanda can facilitate sharing those. And let's make this an interactive communication, learn from each other. I am an expert in confidence for myself. I am an expert at giving my knowledge and content to others, but I have no by, by means any expert. And you have experiences, you have knowledge that as you're sharing them, it's going to help us all grow and learn together. So the first thing is routines. And one of the persons that I admire a lot is John C. Maxwell. Many of you probably already know uh, Dr. Maxwell. And he talks about how crisis reveals what it's already inside of us. And I know that for myself, when the crisis began, when we started to sort of go into this mode of not knowing what was happening, one of the things that I realized is that already what was happening inside my life professionally is something that continued to evolve and be a part of what I needed to have in order to navigate this new beginning and navigate my professional life under the crisis of COVID-19. One of the things that I found is that routines, and I've been working from home, as Amanda mentioned, my company is based out of New York. So when I moved to Connecticut eight years ago, I started working from home. And the advice that I got from my father, who had been in the business world for many years, and he was a trainer, facilitator, worked in, 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 in public speaker, but he said to me, when you're working from home, you need to dress as if you're going to work. And I thought, oh, he's crazy. What does he know? I mean, I get to work from home, right? I, I need to just relax, wear my, my workout clothes. And the second thing he, he came to visit, and the second thing he said is, uh, you know, your office is also a guest room. And I, he, he really said, if you need to have the guest room, which is fine, you need to also make sure that your workspace is conducive to you having the frame of mind for your job. And over the years, that advice has served me very well. So for many, many years, and again, some people can't really help it, right? But for me, my workspace, my desk has to be an environment in which everything I need, every 
everything I will utilize, the tools are here. They're not in multiple places within my house. And this environment helps me. And I've created a routine where, where I work, it allows me to get into a work mode. We are definitely in unprecedented times. So you're going to have to maybe work in the dining room table because you don't have a home office. Maybe you're sharing the home office with your spouse or there's another place within your home. What I would ask you is that you create a routine for yourself. Let's say you're going to be working out of your bedroom or you're going to be working in, in your dining room or outside. Sometimes I do go outside. I actually have a little box of supplies that if I choose to move my workspace outside, I'm going to take that with me so that if I am in a meeting or if I am working on something, I have that confidence and, and it's a routine that I've built for myself. Now, we need to recognize that there is a new playbook at hand. Some of the rules that we've had in the past don't apply to what is going on today. Some of the rules that we've become accustomed to of how we do business, how we interact with our family and with one another have changed. Some of us are still not commuting to work. Some of you were used to maybe having a commute. And in order to continue to build confidence for yourself, I urge you, create routines that serve you because your routines have changed. As humans, we are creatures of habits and habits our brain wants to automate everything. So if you're doing different things from day to day, your brain is already in a mode of sort of panic. Uh, they go into this flight or fight uh, mode of, okay, every day I get up, I get dressed, I get in the car, I go to Dunkin' Donuts, grab my coffee and get to the office. Now you're not doing that. So your brain is sort of in this unsure plays. So creating those routines of come downstairs, make a cup of coffee or your tea or go for a walk in the morning, whatever it is that you're doing, create that routine so that as you are getting started with your day, your brain is starting at ease, your brain is centered and then not going into several different places. Our our brain again is going to be in that cognitive overload. So it's thinking of what if, right? There's so many unknowns because none of us have navigated a pandemic before. Our brain is thinking, well, what's going to happen? What, what is my day going to be like? Or how are we going to survive? And how are we going to recap? So all of these things are things that you want to go ahead and control by creating routines. I have a very specific morning routine and I've incorporated a couple different things into my routine that do serve me. My routine typically in the morning is I get up, I come downstairs, make coffee, let the dogs out, and then I sit down and I journal and I plan my day. I sit down and I go through my schedule and decide what are the things. And because I don't work for an organization before, but I have my own organization, the routine hasn't changed. It has stayed the same. So whether you are in the business world and your company has changed, you want to go ahead and establish some of the same routines that create that honoring of time and in, in relating, your brain is able to relate to what's normal and safe for it. You want to make sure also that you create direction and stability for where you want to go. If you want to plan your day, you want to make sure that you create routines that help you stay healthy. I am a big proponent of self-care and self-care is not going out and getting a manicure a pedicure, although that would be lovely for some of us, even a haircut. But what we want to do is we want to create routines like drinking water, keeping hydrated throughout the day, because the more that you help your physical body feel better, it helps your mind be in a place that is better suited, more confident, and able to handle no matter what the challenges that you're encountering throughout the day. So routines are key as your day closes. The other thing that I would suggest is you also want to create routines to close out the day. Now, because again, we're working from home and we have this new playbook that we're going by, there's some lines that are blur. When do you take lunch? When do you end your day? End your day, create stability and say, I'm going to work until seven o'clock, six o'clock, five o'clock, whatever it is that you're working. Now, there is a little bit of blurred lines in between job and home. 
So again, the routines will help you be able to navigate the things that, that are important as you're creating a schedule and really going through what are the things that you're looking to accomplish for the day. One of the things that you will see at the end of the day as you're closing out your day that you can say, oh, I completed this or I accomplished that. And by accomplishing things throughout your day that you set out to do, you're going to feel more confident. You're going to feel more at ease with the things that you are doing. Accomplishing things is important. I want to urge you as well, as you're looking at whatever the unknown is of the future to build more confidence, one of the key things that you should do as well is look to the past and look at evidence of things that you've navigated in the past that you were able to do successfully. Because in finding that evidence of the things that you were successful at will help you know that no matter what comes, you'll figure it out and you can do the work. Now, connections. The reason that connections are important and help to build your confidence is because if you hang out with confident people, like Rachel Hollis says, you become more confident. There's another, um, another saying that you are the sum of the people that you spend your time with. So as you are spending time with people, friends, family, uh, acquaintances as you're walking by in your neighborhood or whatnot, or even some of your coworkers, make sure that you are connecting with people who are honest, optimistic, and really bringing in some positive energy. Because as you, if you spend time, for instance, with people who are really stressed, we have these things in our brain that are called mirror neurons. And mirror neurons, basically, if someone is, is stressed and vibrating, and, and if you think about going into a meeting and you're coming in kind of hassled, or you someone is coming into to the meeting hassled and they come in, they sit down, they plop down and they're like, <gasps> right? You're sort of beginning to vibrate and sort of feel that stress. So even though a lot of us are still in a remote environment, we need to understand that the people that we surround ourselves with are going to bring that back and, and, and some of that vibe into us. So the connections and how we connect with people are going to be important. If you have people around that maybe are stressed out, feeling down, depressed, you should also be the optimistic, the honest person. You can say to someone today, I'm really struggling. I really don't know how I'm going to manage daycare for my children in the future. I know I'm really struggling with homeschooling today. That I don't get this new math. Be honest with other people. Being honest and talking about specifically some of the things that may be in your mind will help diffuse some of the stress that you may feel and therefore be able to navigate anything that comes your way in a more successful manner. You also, again, like I said, the old playbook is out the door. As you're connecting with people, we're not connecting by phone or by in person. We're not seeing them day in and day out, but connecting in new ways. One of the things that I started doing as the pandemic uh, came about is in, I decided to connect with people the old fashioned way. I, I send one card or handwritten note to a friend once a week. And the reason that I continue to do this is because we all need a connection. We all need to see something exciting. And how many of us go to our mailbox and are, are finding bills or advertisements or if, and we're getting into the political season, right? So we're going to be getting a lot of different things that maybe are triggering our brain with some stress. So in order to connect with each other, you don't have to send a letter out, but maybe you're making a phone call. Maybe you're reaching out via social media to a friend that you haven't heard her from a long time. Perhaps you're having a conversation with that aunt who you love to spend time with, but hasn't been able to get out and about. And as you're going out and about, go for a walk. A good friend of mine and, and Erica, who has, um, who's doing one of the sessions herself today, we, we have connected. We go out for our walks and throughout the entire pandemic and shutdown, we would meet at the parking lot of the local coffee shop and have our coffee 
remotely. And that has been really helpful. So don't get stuck in the past of how things were done before, uh, or, oh, don't get stuck in thinking, oh, this is the only way that I was able to connect with people. I miss hugging people. I miss going to the restaurants. And yes, all of that has changed, but connecting in the new way and thinking outside the box is also going to help you feel more at ease in your skin and also be able to, in your workspace, be able to successfully navigate it in a confident manner because connections fill our spirit. When you're connecting with your coworkers as well, connect with them and know that we, we must reorient. Our roles in the workplace have also changed. So if we relate it to different people in certain ways, know that you're going to have to reconnect with them differently and figure out how you're going to do that. If you are a supervisor, how did you connect with your people? How did you navigate helping them? How did you navigate being able to just guide them? And having those connections are going to be important. So Julie, now, yes, we are actually already at 1225. So you've said some really great stuff and I just want to provide some feedback from the chat. So sure. we have Tammy um, who mentioned, she said, I think the point of creating routines that serve us is so valuable. I like that Julie is suggesting how we can create virtual changeovers from home to work throughout the day. Um, and I completely agree with that. I like wrote down some notes oh, saying start, middle and end, like create routines for those yeah. specifically. Um, and then we have um, Chris who said, I try to have meetings with my team over our cell phone and on our wall Love that. just yep. to make sure they are getting that break from sitting in front of the computer all day, or at least outside if we can't walk because we also have kids at home in some instances. Yep. So um, some great stuff. Um, our Power the Bridge program is starting at 1230. So I just want to let you know, mm -hmm. um, yep. we could kind of wrap up in the next couple of minutes. Absolutely. So in order for you to keep a healthy morale and communication, you want to go ahead and, and keep a clear mind because a clear mind is going to help you communicate with others and is also going to help you and your spirit be more connected. You want to hold space also for everything that is going on. The confidence through communication, whether you're communicating in person or virtually, you want to make sure that also you don't sweat the small stuff. Lastly, learn from your failures in the past. Learn from the things that as we're navigating new territory, we begin to figure out, okay, well, maybe connecting with my friends or my family was not helpful, but really be able to give yourself some grace and be in the moment because the moments are how we are starting to really move forward. It's just from day to day, things change in the news from day to day. And ultimately, confidence is an inside job. It's an inside job in knowing who you are as a person, knowing how you navigate the world and take an honest look and, and, and see what are the ch things that help you or some of the things that you need to change and improve upon. Because as we look at the things that we honestly need to improve upon, we become a better version of ourselves. And as we become a better version of ourselves, we also become more confident and can move forward in any direction that we're looking to do. For me, if you're looking for additional resources or if you want to talk confidence or if you want to check out some of the things that can help you navigate what is happening, not only in the workspace, but in, your, in the social world and also with education, I am happy to share any of the resources. Specifically, one of the resources that I've put together is, and, I, and I'm working with my, my good friend, Melanie, uh, from Harvest Development, and we we are doing a workshop actually later on on personal branding, but find out confidence means knowing who you are and how do you present yourself into the world. And personal branding is a way in which you can build some of the confidence is by creating a personal brand for yourself, a personal brand that includes your values and your hopes and dreams and what you're looking to accomplish. So I have an ebook that you can actually check out. And if you go to 
to go, go confidently coaching, you can go in the, under resources and you will see the book there. There is also my podcast. I speak to a lot of women that have phenomenal knowledge on confidence and tell you they don't have it all together, but they figured it out. And these are great stories of how to be able to navigate and, and be a little more confident in your world. So check that out as well. And I am going to stop sharing my screen. Thank and you, if, Julie. If you have any questions, feel free to connect with me. So we had one question. Somebody asked if we can share, if you can share this uh, presentation, the slides. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. So you can send I can that share on. The and then also, can you drop in the link to that ebook? Um, I couldn't sure. click on it and drop it in. Oh, so that okay. Have so that. Ba -ba. let me see. Um, and for those who um, didn't see in the chat, I did drop in um, a link to Go Confidently Coaching. Um, and Julie also has a LinkedIn, a uh, Facebook, and an Instagram page where you can follow and learn more about the work that she's doing. So I am dropping that in here. Um, and Definitely. And, and again, it, Julie at Go Confidently Coaching is a good way to reach out to me as well. If any of you have a, want to chat or want more information, I'm happy to also share that with the group. Oh, great. And thank you it's all. It's been for such attending. a pleasure for sure. So thank you, everyone. It's been wonderful to just spend some time and share. I hope you found some tips that you can incorporate into your everyday life. Perfect. Thank you everyone for joining us. I hope that you all enjoy um, Power of the Purse and that you um, found some new information that you can take home with you um, as you continue to work remotely. Enjoy Power of the Purse. Thanks everyone. Great. Thank you so much everyone. Bye-bye. I like that color wall. <laughs> that is pretty. It is pretty. Great. I had so a timer going, so I'm sorry. I, I and I didn't. I I didn't want to look at the timer because you know it was. Um, it was time goes quick place, when so. you're talking about some pretty impactful things, right? We're all oh. going through this, so. Bye, bye, Sandra. Bye, Sandra. Perfect. So now you can go ahead and join the program, okay. Julie. So everything, you think everything went okay? I mean, I yeah, I, covered, I know the time went really yeah. fast. No, um, so you fine. had a few more slides, but if you can send no, those no, to me. No, no, it's fine. Yeah, I'll be happy to. Definitely. Perfect. Okay. So great. I'm going to drop into the program. So thank you. Sounds again. great. Bye. And Sandra, you can drop into the program as well. I sent the link, but I can resend it if needed. If you go to the chat on the bottom, open the chat. Let's see. Okay, I just resent it, so it's at the bottom. You just click powered-2020.com. Um, oh, you don't have sound. <laughs> okay.